Demand pull inflation occurs when AD increases above the capacity of the economy. Demand pull inflation could arise from increases in wages, or lower indirect tax, which stimulates consumption, or through a monetary variable, such as lower interest rates or increased money supply. The AD curve shifts to the right. The gradient on the AS curve has an effect on the extent of inflation. The more it is inelastic, the greater the inflationary effect. Cost push inflation can arise from many sources, including wages and raw materials and factor productivity, or from a rise in imported prices as a result of a weaker currency. Falling prices, called deflation, can originate from both the demand and the supply side. Deflation can be benign, caused by improvements in supply, which lower costs or malign, caused by falling aggregate demand. The two types can occur together in a deflationary spiral. The Phillips curve relates to the observed statistical relationship between inflation and unemployment. In 1958, New Zealand economist A.W. Phillips published the results of his research into unemployment and inflation in the UK economy from data gathered between 1861 and 1957. Graphically, each dot represents a year of data, with the Phillips curve the line of best fit for the data. So, what did the Phillips curve show? When analysed, the data suggested a stable and inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation. At lower rates of unemployment, the inflation rate is higher. Policymakers were quick to exploit the curve. If the economy was operating at point A, with unemployment troublingly high at 6%, the government would pump up demand with a fiscal stimulus. It could then predict that, sometime later, inflation would rise. In the graph? to 4% as the economy moved to point B. However, if attention switched to inflation, the government would reverse its policy and impose a fiscal constraint. The economy would then move back to point A. The process of periodically stimulating and constraining an economy was called stop-go policy. This dominated policy in the UK from the 1950s to the 1980s. So, what's going on? The belief was that the policy worked through its effect on the labour market. Reflating would cause the economy to expand. Unemployment fall. With wages and prices being driven up. Conversely, deflation created unemployment, with wages pegged back. Governments and other policymakers have at their disposal a wide array of individual policies to help them achieve their objectives, which include a reduction in inflation, which means keeping the rate of inflation within certain limits, typically around 2% per year in most countries. Policies can be put into one of two main categories, those that influence demand and those that influence supply, commonly called demand-side and supply-side policy. On the demand side, we have fiscal and monetary policy. While fiscal policy uses taxation, public spending or borrowing to achieve changes in aggregate demand, monetary policy attempts to influence aggregate demand by expanding or contracting economic activity through the regulation of the supply of or the demand for money. In a modern economy, fiscal policy is the responsibility of government, while monetary policy is the responsibility of the central bank. Fiscal and monetary policy can be used to target any policy objective, although typically, monetary policy is given over to the pursuit of a stable price level. Monetary policy involves changing either the price of money, its interest rate, or the quantity of money. The monetary transmission mechanism shows how interest rates work their way through the economy, affecting asset prices, confidence, exchange rates, and finally onto the price level. Fiscal policy attempts to alter aggregate demand through changes in taxes, government spending, or borrowing. Discretionary fiscal policy means deliberate policy changes, usually in an annual budget, while automatic stabilizers use fiscal drag and fiscal boost to regulate the business cycle automatically. Fiscal drag means that progressive taxes and welfare benefits combine to slow an economy down if it is growing too quickly. 
Fiscal boost stimulates the economy automatically by using progressive taxes and benefits to pump money back into an economy when it is slowing down. Supply-side policies are longer-term policies which attempt to improve the productivity and flexibility of labour and the competitiveness of firms. Supply-side policies are often categorised in terms of whether they try to enhance the workings of the free market economy, such as by deregulation and removing the constraints imposed by government, or whether they involve more intervention by government, such as increased spending on education and healthcare and on infrastructure. Measures include removing rigidities in the labour market, business startup incentives, incentives to use new technology, encouraging individuals to work, promoting training, education, and a healthy workforce, and removing obstacles to competition. The long-run aggregate supply curve is influenced by supply-side policy. Although vertical, it can shift if productive potential increases 